I screwed up. All right, so I got a level with you guys on the last video. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a, it's for this is for a beginner series, okay? And uh, I screwed up. I did something that I didn't think about because I have my habits, and this is a great time to get into that. So um, number one, I apologize. I presented an unsafe practice that. Um, it's just something I do that I didn't explain. Okay, so you saw me plug in a battery into the airplane on my workbench and adjust all the throws on the airplane, okay? The unsafe practice is I had the prop on. Ideally, if you're brand new to this hobby, you should have the prop off. That's my bad, I should have explained that, I didn't. Um, that being said, what I personally do is before I ever even plug a, a, a receiver in to bind it to the radio is I make sure that I have a throttle cut programmed. So when you saw the footage of me checking the motor rotation after the motor was properly mounted, that was one of the things that I tested was to make sure that the throttle cut was working. I'm not gonna go into how you set up a throttle cut on your specific radio. It's not what my channel is about. I'm, I'm not about reviewing radios and telling you how to do them because, I mean, honestly, it would be too confusing after the second video. Um, but, you know, look, look up, do a Google search, use your Google Foo, whatever you have to do. Uh, make sure that you have a throttle cut. That's my personal uh, safety check. Yes, accidents can happen. Yes, the absolute safest thing to do is to make sure you have prop off whenever you're inside the shop. Granted, now I was using a battery. It's a three cell battery. The airplane flies on a six cell, so it's using half the number of cells. It could have still been bad, um, but again, I have my habits, my safe practices. Um, so for example, when you saw me adjusting those things, the radio never leaves the surface. I don't hold the radio when I'm adjusting it. It stays flat on the table. I don't move it to make sure that I don't move that throttle cut switch. Um, it also prevents me from bumping the throttle if it's like balancing around my neck or something, or if I get distracted looking at something else and I bump the throttle. It prevents all of that. If it stays flat on a surface, it doesn't move, okay? So that's that's the way I personally work. It's up to you. I'm not here to say what's right, what's wrong. I'm not here to criticize people, uh, but I was called out by my good friend, Mike, and thank you, Mike, for, for pointing that out. Uh, I, sh I should have said something, and I didn't. And for that, I apologize. If you're brand new to this hobby, recognize that making mistakes is part of this hobby. I make mistakes too. Um, moving on. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna do an overlay of a flight video as I talk about the flight characteristics of the airplane. So the edge flies like any other edge. It, it's pretty much point and shoot. I will say mm -hmm. that the wing fences that go on the wing tips, they do make a big difference. The video footage that you're watching is not me flying the airplane for the first time. Since I'm a pretty experienced pilot, it's hard for me to say, you know, what some of the pitfalls might be because it's an aerobatic airplane. Um, you know, you fly it too slow, it's gonna fall, it's gonna stall. If you don't use enough power on landing, it's gonna stall. Uh, it lands a little bit hot. Uh, those kinds of things, the center of gravity is, is, is spot on. When you fly inverted, in a 45 degree upline, you only have to give a tiny, tiny touch of elevator. Um, the recommended throws that I that I gave you uh, are good, um, with exception of the aileron. Uh, the aileron could use uh, just a, a touch more, maybe uh, five millimeters more on in each direction, so a total of one centimeter more. Um, but again, the other thing that I noticed on this airplane is when flying wide open throttle, if I do a roll, uh, these particular uh, servos are not up to the task. Okay, they they they're 
they just don't provide enough torque and that's fine uh, again for this airplane i'm not flying it 3d i'm not trying to fly it wide open throttle all the time uh, i'm flying in scale precision aerobatic maneuvers not a huge deal in terms of the uh the controllability it's 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 great uh, you've got plenty of authority anywhere you go uh, you can throw this airplane around the sky with a lot of confidence it's not particularly uh, there, there's nothing really bad to say about it. It just flies great. Uh, the, the landing gear, I'm exceptionally pleased to, to, to say there. that my, my field it holds up great. Uh, my field is old farmland and the way the runway goes left to right, um, there used to be uh, corn rows that would go forward and aft. Uh, so essentially you have these ripples and despite having a vibrating roller come out several years in a row we still have them there um, so trust me when i tell you that the landing gear is quite robust um, other than that i've got that i don't know, got I guess. good size to it this is a great size airplane in terms of being able to fly having enough space in the sky to do all sorts of maneuvers but the airplane isn't so big that it's cumbersome to handle in terms of transportation in terms of assembly uh, assembly you know you you put the wing tube on and the wing tips and the wings bolt on i mean you can have this airplane together in five ten minutes no problem and it's not like it's super complicated or anything um, but it it also will fit in the back seat of a car no problem too it's just not that huge of an airplane but at the same time it's got enough presence in the sky that you can see the maneuvers that you're doing pretty easily the markings i love the bottom of the wings the way that the marking is it's very distinctive from the top so you've got uh, lines going one direction versus uh, the other on the top of the wings it's it's great um, the yellow also helps i find that yellow is like the best for visualization of an airplane in the sky it just is uh, against a blue sky or green trees or whatever it may be yellow is just it, it's right on the money overall I, you know the, again these sunny sky motors uh, <laughs> it's got so much power so so much power it's super efficient uh, i can easily fly two sequences for the imac basic uh, on one set of ba batteries and it'd be like essentially just a hair below storage charge. We're talking like 3.75 uh, to 3.8 volts per cell, which is pretty much storage charge. I try to keep mine at 3.8, 3.85 volts per cell. Um, so plenty of confidence and that's like in about seven, eight minutes of flying time. Super efficient because on another airplane, on a different motor, I was getting like a solid five, six minutes. Uh, so getting more flying time for the same size of airplane is just it's that's great with me uh, ESC doesn't seem to be getting warm, but again, I can't really access it motor doesn't seem to be having any issues at all um, The spinner I, I if you have a true turn spinner, I highly recommend it um, They just they look great and uh, they cut through the air quite well I'm assuming that the uh, vented spinner that comes with the airplane would do just as well uh, I, I have no doubt. I love those spinners. I've got them on a couple of other of my airplanes. So other than that, guys, I mean, the, the, there's really nothing else to tell you other than it flies great. You just have to learn how to fly it. It's like anything else. Take off with plenty of speed, plenty of authority. Make sure you're ready on the rudder. Um, it's pretty much a point and shoot airplane. There's, uh, there, there's plenty of things that I could go into in terms of flying this type of airplane, but that's really, not really the point of this video series. It really is for... Uh, beginners getting familiar with an ARF. Um, so in terms of aftercare, uh, there are a couple of loose bits of covering film that I have touched up with the covering iron. Uh, I put a couple of stickers on just to see how it looked, but honestly I'm, I'm pleased with how it was to begin with. Um, but keep in mind that the more stickers you put on, if you get like a rip or something like that in the covering film, it's going to be harder to repair that. So just keep that in mind too. Uh, whether or not you fly off of like rocks or something, you know, you can pick up a rock and it can go through covering film. I've seen it. Um, keep your airplane clean. 
You know, I, I usually take uh, Windex or some sort of degreaser to my airplanes at least once a season, like in the middle of the season, and then once at the end of the season. You'd be surprised how much grass and dead bugs can build up on the edge of, their, of your prop blade. Uh, and that's just to keep the air clean, make the efficiency keep up. And honestly, it looks better. It's kind of gross when you go up to someone's plane and you see all the dead bugs on it that have just been you know, rotting. Um, but regardless of that, guys, you know, I'm, I'm happy to share all of these tips and tricks with you. Uh, I'm currently working on another airplane. It's actually a build for someone else in my club. So it's quite a bit bigger. <laughs> um, but as I come across things with that airplane, it is another ARF uh, at 90 inch wingspan ARF. And if there are any other tips or things to pass along, that'll be in like a 200 series airplane because this airplane is much more complicated, uh, being bigger and gas powered as well. And if you want a shirt like this, I'm still offering my channel shirts. If you enjoy the work that I'm doing, feel free to head on over to the link in the description below and pick yourself up a Joshua Orchard t-shirt. So until next time, continue to enjoy your flying works of art.